it's almost too late. If you haven't rushed out to buy up the remaining stocks of fluorescent tubes, then you're going to have to find a different solution. As in just a few weeks time, these lamps will be banned. So we've popped along to this car valeting workshop to see how we can beat the ban. Now, with the increase in electricity prices, the owners of this business have tried their best to reduce the energy use. They've adopted some pretty drastic measures, removing the tubes in some areas and trying out some LED retrofit tubes. Of course, we know the easiest way to save energy is to work in darkness. But we think when you're valeting cars, quality of light is important. This video focuses on enhancing the lighting in this workshop. If you're interested in expanding your lighting knowledge, stay tuned. Later on, I'll share a fantastic tip that can help reduce energy costs using a paintbrush and a handy tool available on your smartphone. Additionally, I'll also provide information on where you can access a top-notch lighting design service for free. We don't have long to turn the job around, so we've called in Rapid Ross Sands. And because Rick's on holiday, yes, I'm back on the tools. So our first mission is a quick sight men to decide how we're gonna do this installation. Two switches, so we're gonna split the switching arrangement, yes? We are, yeah. That'll be conduit room there, conduit room there, conduit room there. And then you probably have one going straight down there like that. Okay. And we're gonna pick them, up, pick them off a plug-in lighting ceiling rows type thing. Yeah, yeah. and ceiling rows to your, to your lights. Okay. Jeff, yeah. Back to the switch. Back to the switches. Two circuit, two switching circuits. Yeah, there's a bit of conduit to be bent there. Yeah, I'd like to see the expert in action really when it comes to conduit. <laughs> so uh, we won't watch you meet. I'm looking at this job and I've got a little bit of a fear that this is one day's work and I'm mm. here as well. I think I'm gonna get roped into doing. You're gonna have to, to work do... faster, I guess. <laughs> You're gonna get roped into doing. You're gonna have to work fast. So I don't slow down, Ross, I brought along some new tools to help speed up the job. We will push the boundaries of the spit electrician's nail gun to fix things like conduit saddles, the light fittings themselves, and plastic back boxes. I've also brought along this Nipex tube car. Thanks to Robus, we already have the light fixtures, but we need to whisk down to our local wholesaler for the other parts. Key question when you go to the wholesaler is, will they have all of the things that we need for the job? Now, Ross has made his list I think it could be the click sockets that uh, throw the job off uh, off hand here. Just One pack, yeah, 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 big, big job this. Big job, yeah. yeah it's all Not bend the conduit wrong as well. Gordon's going to show us how to do it. Thirty lens. Yeah. One pack, yeah, yeah. That's we've got our own white. Twenty mil white, yeah. Some metal saddles, boxer saddles. You got white ones? Yeah, I think so. Make them twenty mil as well. Yeah, six through boxes. Give a few clues. Can it be white and 20 mil? Yeah, and five tea boxes. Uh, 20 mil. 20 mil, all 20 mil. Car valet goes around there, you know. I can't see the valet the car. Don't do that thing where you say 5, 7, 14, 26, <laughs> 34, 12, 17, 8, 4, 6, because it's nothing worse, is there, Jess? People who do that to you, terrible. So while Ross and Gary crack on with the installation, let's look at the design process. We surveyed the workshop a few weeks ago and found two major problems. Firstly, the light levels are really low, with an average light level at floor level of around 70 lux. That's 10 times less than the typical levels recommended for this kind of application. The second issue is uniformity, or the difference between the brightest lit areas and the dullest parts. We found areas as low as 20 lux. So imagine the problem for these guys. One minute you're outside cleaning a car in the bright daylight, then you walk inside and try to find something on the shelf in near darkness. It takes time for the eyes to adjust. So I'm thinking 
potential for slips and trips. Working in these conditions, it's no wonder these guys need glasses. Can I help you? Yeah, I can't see all So although we could simply replace existing fixtures with more efficient LED ones, that won't solve the uniformity issue and could worsen things. So combined with the age and the mix of the existing fixtures, we've decided to go for a full lighting redesign. As you delve into this video, you'll encounter some new terms like lux levels, uniformity. Gary, it's uniformity. Uniformity. You know what, let's just go with it. Lux levels, uniformity, lumens and colour temperature. And if you're keen on grasping these concepts and impressing the customer with your lighting expertise, be sure to check out our free training course on lighting basics. I'll leave a link for it at the end of this video. The question we always get asked is how to determine the correct lighting levels for an application. The Society of Lighting Lighting publishes a set of comprehensive lighting guides that give suggested lighting levels and parameters for a huge different range of applications from offices to car parks. For detailed work such as car valeting, we need to be looking at around 700 lux. However, you also don't need 700 lux all of the time. Some of the initial cleaning and polishing isn't detailed work, or you might be just tidying up the workshop or taking a lunch break. So we will arrange the lighting across two circuits, but maintain the uniformity with both circuits on. We get 700 lux with one circuit, 350 lux and a 50% reduction in energy. The next question we often get asked, how do I determine how many light fittings are needed? If the existing installation is delivering the correct light levels, then you can match the new fitting to the light output and distribution of the old one. Fixtures like this Robus speed beam are available in a range of lengths and lumen outputs to match existing fluorescent fixtures. Here's a clever tool built into your iPhone, the Measure app, which is handy if you're doing a survey and you can't tell the length of the existing fittings because they're installed so high up. On this project, we need to do some lighting calculations. You can do this on excellent lighting design software such as Relux. There's an even easier way though. Just ask Robus to do the design for you, which is what we've done here. The lighting design service is available using the MyRobus app and simple designs you can even do within the app itself. I'd however like to thank Rory over at Robus HQ for turning this design around faster than the time it takes for me to boot up my laptop. Let's have a look at the finished job. We connected to the existing installation and put up three rows of conduit to match the lighting layout. We used the click sockets for the final connections for each light. This works well with this conduit system. We could have looped in and out of each fixture using the screwless terminals or fixed them directly to conduit boxes. Let me know how you would have wired it. Would you have gone down the twin and earth route and wired through each of the fixtures? We've pulled in a neutral, a CPC and two line conductors using brown for one switching circuit and black to identify the other. Of course, metal clips for the conduit and the spit nail gun fixed them like a dream. Note, these are screwed nails so they can easily be removed or adjusted on those conduit saddles. We use the same fixings to fix the lighting fittings to the joists one row of fixtures had to be suspended using hooks and the world's shortest jack chain as there's an RSJ in the way. We fix the conduit boxes using the soft face spit nails. One thing we haven't discussed is colour temperature. The tubes in the old installation were all over the place with warm, cool and daylight white. We've used neutral white for our design, but what if the customer changes their mind? I know this never happens. However, with the speed beam, you can select the colour temperature by changing the dip switch settings in the driver. When we first powered up this installation, out of the box, the fixtures were set to warm white and the customer was a little bit shocked. A quick flip of the dip switch and we're set to neutral white as planned. You can also switch select the power level and hence the light output. These are great features for wholesalers who don't want to carry loads of different part numbers or electricians who want flexibility across different projects. You can also effortlessly incorporate a microwave occupancy sensor, emergency lighting pack, or both. These fixtures are conveniently pre-wired with a plug and socket connection, enabling quick conversion of any fitting. As a helpful tip, these connections also came in handy when conducting the insulation resistance test. I'll leave a link in the description so you can find out more about the speed beam range 
and a link to the My Robus app so you can access the lighting design service. Now for that tip with the paintbrush. One thing that's considered in lighting design is the reflectance of surfaces. Dark surfaces don't reflect as much as light surfaces. This has a considerable effect on lighting levels. Change the colour of the floor from black to light grey can make an enormous difference to the amount of light required and hence the energy. That's exactly what Volvo trucks did in this installation, which saved energy, but also increased the light levels under the trucks during assembly. Well, that's us done on site here. We've tackled the lamp van, increased light levels, and reduced energy consumption. Ross has even had his van cleaned. Cleaning? If you'd like to learn more about lighting, I'd thoroughly recommend you check out the free training course, which is available right here.